Next person going to come up. She is a brilliant physician. And she is a brilliant writer. She's making millions think by talking on national television, writing books, and just speaking wherever she can. Dr. Julie Holland. Hey there. This was just a really great conference, as usual. Um, I'm, I'm really, I'm honored to be tapped to come up here at the end. I was, uh, I emailed my mom and I said, it's a little bit like being prom queen or something. So, <laughs> so thank you, Ethan, for, for giving me that. So yeah, I am, I am a physician and um, it is sort of my, my calling and my honor and my duty uh, to alleviate pain and suffering. And that's why I fight our drug policy, which is, uh, I will tell you as a psychiatrist, our drug policy is insane. It is not based on, <laughs> it's not based on anything sane or rational or scientific. It is based on shame and stigma and xenophobia and capitalism and greed and corporate malignancy um, and ignorance and racism, um, and I'm happy to fight it. I'm proud to fight it. And, uh, you know, I, uh, one of the things that I'm very interested in is psychedelic research, and um, I'm the medical monitor for MDMA uh, post-traumatic stress disorder studies and cannabis post-traumatic stress disorder studies. Um, uh, I am very interested in uh, people feeling connected with other people and uh, the concept of empathy. Um, and Ian Benwee talked a little bit about a psychedelic experience that allowed him to see his trauma from the mind of the perpetrator and that that alleviated a lot of pain for him and I thought that was really important. Um, so there are some drugs that allow you to have other perspectives and bigger perspectives or allow you to, uh, to feel connected or feel an, uh, empathy for another person or for yourself. Um, so these things are healing, these things are therapeutic. And to be denied access to them is obviously blatantly unfair. Uh, what we do have access to, especially women today in America, we have access to medicines to numb us. Uh, uh, I like to call it the, the big pharma speedball. They're making plenty of money off of opioids and amphetamines. Um, and, uh, the other thing that's happening is that one out of four women in America right now are taking a psychiatric medication. So we have a lot of people who are sort of comfortably numb, sweeping some of their symptoms under the carpet, um, as opposed to having access to something uh, more potent and more effective that would help them take the carpet out back, beat the hell out of it, vacuum the whole floor, and then put the carpet back down. <laughs> so... Uh, one of the things that's particularly concerning for me as a psychiatrist is that, is that our sort of national diagnosis has morphed from neurotic to psychotic, that we've gone from everybody being on antidepressants to people being on antipsychotics now, and especially kids. So I really think uh, we need to pay attention to what we're taking and what our children are taking and you know what, that there are some better options, that we can be more awake and more aware and more empathically connected, but that means we're going to feel more. Um, I understand that it's nice to feel less and that there are some drugs that allow you to feel less, but I really think that that's sort of the wrong direction for our country to go and the wrong direction for the world to go in, that what we all need um, is to be more aware of the terrible things that are, that are going on. Um, I said earlier today, like if you're, if you're not traumatized, you're not paying attention. <laughs> so... Um, we all have PTSD. You know, we're all, if you're paying attention to what's going on in the world, it's terrible. And I don't think that the solution is, is to take more sort of mind-numbing, body-numbing medicine and turn away. And, um, you know, our veterans are particular, uh, Ian also, <laughs> I'm quoting you a lot, Ian, uh, was, was calling the veterans our, our moral conscience. Um, you know, it's hard to see how hurt they are how wounded they are psychically 
um, but it's because they're carrying out terrible work that we've sent them to do. And it's hard to look at how terribly we've treated the indigenous populations and uh, people of the First Nation. Um, we don't want to look because it's so terrible and it's sort of like this the Jungian shadow and you know facing the darkness and the terrible things in ourselves and seeing how it manifests um, in our country um, and I'm just remembering wait Ethan told me to be uplifting so <laughs> let's all shift gears so let's not look at that or talk about that um, you know we need we need to to dig down to the places where we've been hurt and we need to dig down to where the malignancies are and we need to pull them out and examine them and then reintegrate with them absent. Um, I am a harm reductionist and the foundation of harm reduction to me is education. And that's why conferences like this are so important because we all learn from each other. Um, and we, you know, we need to embrace transparency and sharing data with each other and embrace uh, freedom, cognitive freedom, cognitive liberty. Um, the, you know, the ability to, uh, these are victimless crimes for the most part. I was, I was, uh, my daughter Molly is here, and my whole family is here with me this weekend, and um, she, she spoke earlier today, and I hear she did a good job, but we were speaking at the same time. But um, I, took, I took her and I showed her a safe injection facility and what that would look like, and I explained um, to my daughter about, um, Like, even if you don't care about somebody who's shooting drugs, you should at least care that if they have clean needles, that there will be less HIV and hepatitis C in the general population. Like, at least that. Um, and, you know, uh, one of the, you know, one of the first things I ever learned about uh, and thought about in college was this idea that everybody should have access to condoms and clean needles. And like, of course, it's a no-brainer. And of course, naloxone is a no-brainer. I mean, like, who is it hurting to help these people? Um, it's, it's pretty terrifying what's happening now. But I, I am optimistic about where we're going. I am optimistic about Canada and Mexico and the sort of peer pressure that will happen in America. <laughs> if nothing else. Um, and I'm, I am optimistic about not just minimizing harm, but, but starting to talk about maximizing benefits, that these drugs, they are medicinal plants, they are sacred visionary plants, and I include cannabis in this. Um, you know, this is a, we need to sort of re, Somebody say like sacralize. I don't know if that's a word, but uh, to recontextualize the drugs in, in ritual context, um, and to and to re sort of make them sacraments again. Um, I think it's important <laughs> when we leave here and when you go home and people want to know where you were, tell them where you were, tell them what you learned, out yourself as a functional drug using adult. I think it's very important. <laughs> Okay, so um, go forth and conquer, you know, what the world needs now is love and not just for some, but for everyone.